talk about uh, intermolecular forces and stuff yesterday, and I don't know if we picked this up or not. But remember, we're, we talk about intermolecular forces. We talk about uh, how strong stuff gets held together, yes? Right? How hold this molecule, how well this one holds on to this one, and that force that connects the two, right? Remember, if it's really, really strong, if that force is really, really strong, like for example, in ionic or metallic, if that force is really strong and it holds them together, how easy is it to break that? Not easy, yes? Okay? So how do you break them? You've got to put in a lot of energy. So therefore, if you want to melt ionic or metallic items, you have to put in a lot of heat, like four, 500 degrees Celsius amount of heat to break those bonds to make it into a liquid, yes? And then you've got to put in maybe 1,000 or 1,200 to change that from a liquid to a gas, right, where they're separate from each other, yes? So intermolecular forces is directly tied to melting points and boiling points, yes? Is my point from yesterday. I don't know if we picked up on that, because I saw this. I didn't actually see that part, but... Um, I didn't see like a lot of uh, understanding on that. So it takes, you know, why is ionic and metallic uh, so high with melting and boiling points? Because they stick together really well because opposites attract, yes? And then we get to molecular. And molecular, they could be in solid form, sure. But they could be in liquid and gas, right? And the boiling point and melting points of those are really low because, you know, for example, water. At how much energy do you have to put into water, let's say in this room here, to make it into a liquid? The answer is none, because it's a liquid, right? How much energy do you got to put in to boil it to change it from a liquid state to a gas state? Well, 100 degrees Celsius will change it from a liquid to a gas. Not much, right? Those forces are not that strong between the liquids, well, between water in that case, right? So intermolecular forces is a direct result of melting and boiling points, right? The stronger the force is, the higher the melting points, boiling points are going to be because you need more energy to put into there to break those intermolecular forces, right? Yesterday, we talked about... Yesterday, we talked about, you know, that chart, yes? And at the top of that chart, we have ionic metallic. They're very, very strong, have high melting boiling points. Down here we have me uh, molecular, right? Sharing, right? Sharing's weak, yes? So we have that at the bottom, right? We did, uh, where's that chart here? Right here, okay? Make sure you know this. I'm going to ask you to use this today, actually, when you get to the questions. You know, we talk about ion metallic, very high melting boiling points because the strength of the intermolecular forces that hold them together are very strong, okay? When we talk about molecular, yes, it can be hydrogen bonding. That's strong, yes, strong. Water, strong, yes? But even water, think about that. That water is hydrogen bonding. It boils at 100 degrees Celsius, right? It's already a liquid at this room temperature. Guess what? All ionic and metallics items are solids. They stick together really well. Water has hydrogen bonding. It's supposed to be really awesome. And it's still only a liquid. Okay? Dipole, dipole, unforced size and shape. Those are all for molecular things. That's what holds those together. Okay? So let's just not forget that. Okay? Once again, it, you know, melting and boiling points is an indication of how strong stuff is. Another indication is what happens when you hammer or stress these things. And some of this we've talked about before, but some of the important stuff here, guys, is, for example, the first one here. Metals are easily deformed. When you kick a, ooh, when you kick a desk that's metal, it deforms. It dents. Okay? It doesn't break, though, because why? Because opposites attract really well. Positive ions in a sea of electrons. Metallic bonding, yes? metals. That desk is aluminum, right? So that aluminum is able to bend and give because layers slide over each other and move out of the way. But it's not, when I kick it, it's not strong enough to go right through. They just bend out of the way because opposites still attract each other very well, okay? 
And some things you could kick, like steel, you can kick that. That's not going to bend or dent. That's really strong. It sticks together really well, right? So, I mean, obviously it depends on the metal that we're talking about, but they can deform, okay? Um, when stress is applied, one layer, one layer slides over another because of delocalized, freely moving valence electrons. Metals are deformed, but they don't shatter. So they're able to, you know, bend out of the way like that, right? Like that as well, apparently. Okay? Ionic compounds, what happens when you hammer or stress ionic compounds? They're really strong too, but don't forget, they're plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, crystal lattice. Like charges become aligned, they repel each other and they break in smooth lines. Yes, smooth planes, we've talked about that before. You should know that. It's time to start reviewing if you have not. Yes? Look, this is called a crystal lattice. That's obviously a very simple one, but crystal lattice structure. When you hammer on them, I sh you guys remember this part, surely, right? Hammer, do I have to label it for you? I don't think so. I just told you it's a hammer. It's a nice hammer. Back off. Okay? Like charges become aligned and they break in that smooth plane, yes? And finally, when we talk about molecular compounds, well, what are molecular compounds? They're sharing. They're weak. So when you go to hammer something like that, it's the hammer might just go right through it. Okay? Uh, it all depends on what kind of molecular compound we have, but they're very weak. They're very soft. They can be broken easily. All right. So the point of this is here's another three ways that you can determine what does metallic look like if you hammer or stress it, what is ionic, what is molecular, right? Another way to describe what's going on here. Not only strengths of intermolecular forces, which apply to hammering and metallic, you know, hammering on metals, hammering on ionic compounds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we can't forget that there's other stuff that we could help to determine. So if I gave you an unknown substance and I said, here, test out, see if this is ionic or not, what would you do? Well, I'd probably hammer on it to see what would happen. That's a test I could do, right? If I hammer on it and it breaks in a smooth line, well, it's probably ionic. If I hammer on it and it says, oh, guess what? The result was it dented. It's probably not ionic. It's probably metallic. Or hammered on it and the hammer went right through and it was very soft. It went bleh, right? Probably molecular, all right? So that's three ways that you can determine and make sure you know those three ways because I'm going to ask you, I used to give you a, a uh, written response question and I said, this compound does this and it does this and it does this. What is it, okay? And you have to rationalize why it is that, okay? Why you pick this one. And then I would say, What's an additional test that you could do to make sure that it, in fact, is that? And then you would say, well, I could hammer on it. That would be a good one. Or you could say, another example is, I could do some conductivity tests on it. Conductivity is, of course, the electrical current or the flow of charged particles, usually electrons or ions. You have to know that metals have a lot of free electrons going around and around, right? Positive ions in a sea of electrons. Is there going to be good conductivity? Very good conductivity for metals. Very good. You hook up a metal to a battery, you touch the metal, it's going to hurt. Okay? Metals are good conductors of electricity. Okay? Soluble ionic compounds. Remember back ways we did top row, right? Where's uh, right here? Soluble ionic compounds. Top row. Very good conductors of electricity when you put those into water. Bottom row, eh, poor conductors, yes? Not good, okay? But they still conduct, but poor, okay? Um, conductivity, by the way, we're gonna, uh, we'll do that. We have fancy ones. We don't have a little a dial like that. We have digital. We're high tech. Insoluble ionic compounds or solid ionic compounds. So ones that have not been put into water. If you just take sodium chloride, for example, and you hook it up to a battery, very poor conductors of electricity, okay? Very poor. Uh, solid ionic, you might even verge on the fact that it doesn't conduct, okay? But insoluble ionic compounds, 
in other words, another word for insoluble, by the way, is slightly soluble, are poor conductors. Okay? Soluble, slightly soluble ionic compounds, solid ionic compounds. There, let's fix you. There you go, take that. Okay? Solid ionic compounds, not good conductors. Okay? In fact, almost verge, I would say, on the verge of none. Okay? Network solids, uh, we're going to skip that. Uh, I told you the two things you need to know about network solids, which are what? Quickly, network solids. Take that. Network solids, two things, what were they? Come on. Give me all you got! That was heat. Apparently filmed in Calgary. Anyway, okay. Two things. Network solids. What? Come on. Co. Say it. Covalently bonded. Thank you. I'm talking to myself right now if you can't see this, people. And. Al. No. Thankfully, you didn't get to see that. Allotropes. Thank you. Oh, criminy. You guys got some studying to do. Okay, we don't need to worry about that. Molecular compounds do not conduct electrical current. Do not. Okay? Do not conduct electrical current. Yes, it has a negative end and a positive end to that molecule, but it stays within the molecule. It does not leave the molecule. They are sharing electrons, molecular compounds, covalently bonded, sharing, sharing. Okay? There's no positive end. There's no, there's no positive and negative. Okay? There is to the molecule, but it doesn't leave the molecule. So, neutral. Okay? Has everyone got the top part here, too? I think we're okay there. All right?